Uh, so we need our young people to be activated, to be reactivated, to be re-educated, so that they can uh, begin to take their rightful places. Uh, you cannot have social transformation without young people. It's impossible. I don't know any revolution you have had without young people. I don't know any social movement you have had without young people. And so we need to get back to the campuses. We also need to make use of this media, the, the social media, and all available media to get the message all out that neoliberal capitalism for at least for us in this part of the world, means modern slavery. It has nothing to offer the majority of working people. It has casualized them. It has degraded them. It has devalued them. It has turned them to slaves. Now it has done to workers, literally. It has limited opportunity, opportunities for young people it has created a mass of employed young people which makes it possible for the capitalists to just speak and drop as they wish. So people need to see these realities for what it is. And they also need to see the possibilities and the alternatives. So, so it's also important to create alternative visions that it is possible to have a system that will not contribute $25 billion into the hand of one person that $25 billion can be used to transform the life of millions of people permanently. That $25 billion US dollars is enough to create jobs, quality jobs. It's enough to address critical economic and production issues that can put millions of people to work. And that to have somebody with $25 billion in the name of he owns a few factories, <clears throat> you know, is exacting too much price on the rest of society. People need to understand these things. If a young person wants to learn about these things, and because it's good to be practical, what book, what singular book can they pick? I don't know. So, I don't know the singular. <laughs> okay, or what can you give us two or three books they can read to understand this thing? Because this is a crucial time in the history of Nigeria, yeah. and youth must understand this. Mm. There are a lot of books out there. Um, there's a TNI, I think. Most people at least can uh, have access to the internet these days. Uh, it shouldn't just be about uh, gossiping about hush puppy. <laughs> uh, people should take time to read serious stuff. So you go to uh, Third World Network, you see a lot of materials. Um, I think how Europe underdeveloped Africa by water running still remains uh, relevant. You know, at least it shows when we say accumulation is by dispossession. You see there how Europe, being what it is, that everybody everybody wants to go there now is by dispossessing Africa. other people and expropriating them. Uh, uh, so what I wrote is still very relevant. Uh, Fanon used to be very inspirational for us when we were very young, and I think it's still very inspirational. Uh, the Rashad of the Earth, uh, Franz Fanon, still remains uh, uh, very inspirational. Uh, so there are lots of uh, if only people we bother to to prove there are lots of uh, information at your fingertips nowadays that uh, people can uh, go to read and learn. Mm. I made a reference to a Tinder book is also important. I stumbled on it in the course of my work with uh, industry last year, late last year. The continent of labor. Asia, the continent of labor. I can't remember the author. It's available online. Where you document <clears throat> when you talk of labor degradation, extreme exploitation of human beings. 
you see it there mm -hmm. what they are doing in Asia and here too and uh, our workers are also fighting back uh, our workers are also challenging some of these things so uh, no, no, those kind of stuff puts a lot of things in perspective and uh, well you know helps to understand the current realities mm. Thank you very much, sir. It's been good to.